Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to wire up and program that S7-1500 controller that we got from Siemens in that starter pack. I think we unboxed it in episode 40. And um, before we do that, a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, I want to thank all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. I got a new insider video coming for you guys here shortly. And uh, for everybody else, I just want to explain what I'm doing here with this uh, with this uh, trainer. This is the trainer I used in the first half of my Compact Logics course. Um, I had an L1 in there and uh, my first half is done. So now I'm using the 5380 in a different trainer with more IL. So I actually put the L1 here and um, I figured, hey, let's reuse this for the S7-1500, right? So um, that's what the trainer has. It has actually has 12 inputs and eight outputs. We got buttons, we got selector switches, we got um, horns and lights and motors, photo eyes and ductile proxies. So um, that's what I'm gonna be wiring up to the S7-1500 today. And um, this is the first time, it actually was a little learning experience for me, having uh, used so much uh, control logics and um, you know, uh, micro logics, compact logic. So, um, but it's good stuff. It's all good. And, uh, we'll go ahead and get started now. I'll fast forward when I'm actually doing the wiring. So you don't have to sit here and watch me land every single wire in real time. But uh, I did kind of want to walk through it because it is, if you've never wired an SM1500, it is a little different than other controllers. So with that said, let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. And, uh, you can see the unit. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And, uh, the first thing I wanted to show you was that these um, terminal blocks, while they're the exact same exact part number, okay, I'll show you that here in case you missed the unboxing. All right, you can see that they're upside down, but they're the same exact part number. Um, one of the things I noticed is that the keys were set in different positions, okay? So I think you can see that right there, those little white keys, and that corresponds to these down here. See, this one's on the right, that one's on the left. So when we put these in, we want to make sure we match them so they can go in just like that. Now, this is the analog terminal block. I'm not going to be wiring any analog in, so I just put that all the way in. But because we will be wiring digital, I won't put this one all the way in. I'm going to put it in its wiring position, which is pretty cool. Now, I know you can't see it here. It's too small, but the wiring diagram's right here on the door. So um, I'm not going to try to zoom in on that, but... Uh, it's also in the manuals on the uh, on the Siemens website too. So with that said, the first thing we want to do is power. Now I do have the system unpowered, right? So um, that's always a safety check you want to do because uh, we all know how dangerous it would be to work with live wires, right? So with that said, there's two blocks here on the uh, power supply. We have where the AC, 120 volt AC comes in, and then we have where the DC, comes out and you can see we come out two different uh, DC outputs. I'll send one to my terminal block here for my IO and then one over to the controller. And if we look at the controller, it has its own DC input and it allows you to daisy chain it. So we'll take the second one and we'll daisy chain it over here for the inputs on the terminal block, which is uh, uh, these uh, bottom two connections right here. So let me get those all wired up. I'll speed up the video here and then we'll be back when it's done. Okay, with that done, you know, I'm going to have my 12 inputs on this side. I also have outputs, and I need to provide power to my outputs, and I have uh, eight, and then there's two spots to land wires there. So let me put those in from the terminal block. Okay, now I'm ready for the I.O. So let me start with the inputs here, 0 through 11. Okay, finally, we have the outputs. I got eight of those. Let me do those, zero through seven. Okay. 
All right, should it be all uh, wired up here? So let's move the swing arm down into its installed position here, wired position, active position, and then we'll close that door. I'm not gonna put a tie wrap around it because we may be changing it or moving it. And actually I'll leave that open so we can turn it on here. Everything's looking good. Oh, I do wanna plug in our ethernet cable. That's way, way, way in there. There we go, get that in there. And now we're ready for power. Let's plug it in, turn it on. And now we'll go ahead and turn the power switch on on the power supply. You can see the control is coming up. I love that uh, little display in there. You can do so much on that display. And I probably should open up this door here. You can see the controls here, stop, run, escape, okay. The uh, arrow selector, so you can go through the menu there and do different things. Okay, you can see it's in the stopped mode. All right, and looks like I have one input on. This would be my normally closed push button, stop button. So when I press it, it goes off. When I release it, it comes on. Let's try some of the other buttons here. That's one, two, three. Get the select the switches, four, five. Let's see, what is number six here? Well, number 10 is the key switch. Number eight is the photo eye. Uh, let's see, we've got an inductive prox here. Let's put a piece of metal on that. Okay, that's number nine. Oh, number six is the motor. Let's go ahead and close those contacts. So that's six. So I think we got everything working there as far as inputs are concerned. Um, let's see, I can take that off there. Excellent. Turn off the switch. So with that said, I think we got everything running. Let me go ahead and close these doors here. And I think with that, it's time to go right our first S7-1500 program. So let's go over to the computer. And here you can see the good folks over at Siemens sent in TIA Portal V16. So we'll open that up. Okay, here I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. Now I'm in, not in the project view, I'm in the portal view. So I create a new project here and I'm just going to call it, let's call it project S715 and I'll click on create. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and configure a device, add a new device. Okay. And this time, instead of choosing the exact part number I have, I'm going to choose an unspecified 1500. Okay, I'll leave those defaults there. Click on add. Okay, and you can see device not specified. Let's go ahead and detect it. So it is on, it is plugged into the network. Okay, I have to choose my network here and then I can go ahead and start search. Okay, you can see it already has an IP address. Originally it showed up as 0.1 and I changed the address uh, in preparation for the show. Now we can tell that this is the right one by flashing the LED. So let me go ahead, we'll look over there. I'll click flash LED. Yep, we can see it flashing right there. Excellent. Okay, so that's the one we want. You can also see the MAC address. That's the same MAC address you'll see underneath the door of the processor. So let's go ahead and detect. Okay, there it is. Now, again, when I was trying this out earlier, I had come in here and given it an address on my network. Again, it was 0 0.1 initially. And uh, the next thing I wanna do is we're not using the analog. I wanna go right to the tags for the digital module. And here we're gonna create some tags. I usually use, uh, I'm gonna call it PB stop for my stop button on zero and then PB start, whoops. These are just the same addresses I use in my courses. Here, this is the motor contact us, so we'll give it an M1. And then for the outputs, let me make this bigger here. Then for the outputs, okay, we have, uh, let's see, 
pilot light stopped pilot light running and then m1 matter of fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to call this one m1 ux because that's the auxiliary context coming in for the motor starter in this case i'm just using a relay but uh those are the auxiliary contacts coming back in. This is actually the uh, output that drives the uh, close of the, the relay. Okay, so let's see. Can't have two M1s, so I put a one in there. Okay, we're looking good there. Now, um, let's see what else. What else do we want to do here? Let's go back to our device. And I think the other thing I want to do is create some PLC tags because um i want to add tags for the basic panel if you remember the first program i did for the basic panel um was uh, to also control the motor in the start and stop the motor in the 1200 and so i'd like to do that uh with this as well so i'm going to just go ahead and add those tags now and i'll call let's see we'll call it hmi start and what do we want this? It will be a Boolean, but we want it to be an M. Okay. And really start is a one and R. We'll do address zero and bit number one here. Okay. And then we'll do an HMI stop, which will be zero. So stop and my programs are typically zero and one. Just keep things simple. So I'll have those as well. So now we're ready to actually write some code. So let's go to our programming blocks here and we'll go to our main OB1. Okay, we'll start our motor control uh, line like this. We'll do uh, the E stop here. We'll do the HMI stop. And then we'll do a start. This will be the hardwired stop, but we'll definitely want to uh, put a branch around that. So we'll open branch, we'll put another start, and then we'll open another branch and put a seal in. Okay, so now we can close these guys. And then of course we need, I'll just drag and drop this one. We need our output. So this will be, let's see, push button, stop. This one will be HMI, stop. This one will be push button, start. And this one will be HMI, start. And this will be the contacts coming in, the auxiliary contacts from the motor starter, which we called M1 UX. And this will be M1, the motor itself, or the output to the contactor. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so the other thing I want to do here is I want to say when the contactor is on, that I want an output. And I want to turn on the pilot lights. So pilot light running. Okay. But I also want to turn off the stop light. Okay. So you can see here when the auxiliary is on, that means I'm running. When the auxiliary is off, it means I'm stopped. So that's a very simple application. Let's go ahead and download it. So I'll come up here and I'll click on download. Okay, I have my network selected and let me go ahead and search for my device. Okay, there it is. And now let's go ahead and download to it. Okay, yep, continue without synchronization and load. Okay, now let's see if we can put the controller in the run mode from here. 
Sure. Yeah. And no, it's still in the stop mode. So I'll just open up the door here and put it in run mode here. Okay. So let me come over here. I'm going to release the stop. I'm going to press the start and it doesn't start. What did I do wrong? Well, unlike, unlike my stop button, which is normally closed, right? My HMI, which isn't even connected is not normally closed. Okay. That button will only turn on when I press it on the HMI. So that's stopping our logic. Well, let's go take a look at it. I'll show you. So here, let's go ahead and monitor. Okay. Now look, I can press the start all day long, but because my HMI stop, right? My HMI doesn't even exist on a network. And when it does, it only turn on when I press it, stop. So in this case, that is stopping the code from working. So we got to fix that. So let's go ahead and see if we can't edit this. All right, now I'll download again. And yes, I do. Okay, that's looking a lot better, doesn't it? All right, so let's go back out here to the field. We got the uh, stop is not pressed. We'll press the start. Hey, and look at that. I was able to press it. Let me do that again. I'll do it slower this time. I'll press and hold it. You can see my logical continuity and then the output comes on and then the contacts come on, sealing it in. And the cool thing is if I were to remove the contacts, right, just remove this whole contact block. You can see because I'm using the output of this contact, the second set of uh, contacts, it trips the, the circuit. Okay. If I was just using the output from the PLC, then it, it would just, it wouldn't trip. Right. So let's go ahead and start it up again. And that's it. So now the next thing to do is see if we can't add the HMI to the network and uh, add some buttons to it as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. You can see here, I've brought over the 1200 and the basic panel from uh, the previous uh, shows. And you can see here, I got the start and the stop, and it still works in conjunction with the start and stop push buttons on the 1200. So now let's see if we can get the 1500 to also use the screen. We'll, we'll create some new buttons there. We'll copy and paste them and see if we can address them over here so that we can use that basic HMI for both of these systems. So let's go over to the computer here. And what I'm going to do here is let's go into, let me go offline first here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save my project. I'm going to do a project open. Let's see if we can find our old project. Browse. My project 02. Let's open that up. And here it's telling me that, hey, that's an old 15.1 project. So it's going to upgrade it and rename the new project, the upgraded project with an underscore V16. So let's go ahead and do that. And I don't know how long this is going to take. So I'm going to speed up the video. Okay. The project finally opened. We can see V16 here was added to the end of the name because we imported it into V16. And you can see my HMI project right here. And the way I'm going to do this may not be the best way. It may not be the most effective way, but it's the only way I found to get it to work. So let me uh, stop by going to device and networks. And I'm going to go ahead and add my S7-1500 here. Oops, I need some more room. Can't see it. I think it's this one right here. Okay, I'll click on the Profinet port there and assign it the address of 1.115. Okay, and now I'm going to drag and drop a connection to the HMI. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and again, maybe there's some way to import the tags or import the entire project, but I couldn't find an easy way to do it. So I'm just going to go in here into the SM1500 that was just added. 
and I'm going to re-add those tags just so I can pick them in the HMI. So we had three tags there. We had a HMI start. Okay, and that was a M01. Okay, then we had an HMI stop. And that was M00. And then we had our M1 underscore aux, which was, I believe it was input, 10, 6. Okay. And I, again, I'm just adding these in here so I can pick it in the HMI. So let's come down to the HMI and we'll go to HMI tags, show all tags. And you know, I'm going to copy these three existing tags from when we integrated the um, HMI into the S7-1200. I'm going to paste them. Okay, I'm going to rename them to 15. Instead of open, one, close. Okay, so now we want to change the tags that they point to. We don't want them pointing to the same tags that we use in the S7-1200. We want to go to the 1500. So here we'll close up the 1200. This is the 1500 I just added. We look at the default tag table and this will be start. And then this one will be again in the 1500. Stop. And Ox. And it looks like I made a typo there. That looks like an exclamation. Let's go back to the S7-1500 I added. And, nope, show all tags. Yeah, it looks like, man, the text is really small <laughs> for old guys like me. All right, so let's go back to, uh, let's see here. Let's see if that updated. Yeah, it did automatically update here. Good. So at this point, we should be ready to do some graphics. So let's go to our existing screen here, which is called Moda Control. And let's grab these three objects for the S7-1200. We'll drag them over here. And then I'm going to do a copy. And then I'll do a paste. Okay, we'll drag them over here. I'm not going to get too fancy with the HMI. This is just you know, part of the demonstration here. Um, in the real world, you'd probably want to have, you know, indicators so you know which motor this was. But um, what we're going to do here is change here on their appearance. We're going to change that from HMI start to HMI start 15. We also want to change the events. So the press event, we want that to be HMI start 15. Want the release to be HMI start 15 for our 1500. Okay, now let's do the stop button here. Again, we'll make this stop 15 and the press will be stop 15. Okay. And the animation that we put on there will be stop 15. Last but not least, we have this indicator, which is just the animation, and we will make that aux 15. Okay, if I've done everything correctly, this should work. So again, this is my first time trying to get two PLCs to communicate to the same HMI or get the same HMI to talk to two different PLCs. So we will see what happens, but I think I did everything right. Let's find out. We're going to go ahead and uh, come up here and click on download 
There we go. Okay. It's going to say, hey, find your product. Okay, that's the only device I have, so I'm going to go ahead and load it. It's compiling. Okay, I'm going to overwrite everything. Load. Okay, we can see it's getting downloaded right now. It's almost done. Okay, let's come out here to the field. And we can see, you know, I'll zoom in on that. See, it flickers a little bit. I got the, uh, the camera on 60 hertz, so I don't know why, but let's go to motor control. Okay, let's see if the 1200 still works. Yep, probably need the, yeah. All right, let's see if the 1500 works. Yes, success. We zoom out a little bit more here. I know that seems easy, but it took a while to figure that out off camera. So um, again, if you are a Siemens expert and there's an easier way to do what I did, then um, please let me know because, you know, I'm just starting out with Siemens. But um, hey, we got it to work and I'm happy. I mean, that was uh, a lot to do to wire the whole thing up, to write a program for it, and then to configure our basic panel to talk to it. So I hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, please give us a like and a sub. And um, if you want to support our show, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And uh, you should see the uh, scrolling below uh, the names of all our current patrons. And I want to say thank you to them. Also, if you're looking for automation training, check out my full-time job over at theautomationschool.com. That's where I work full-time. And uh, um, we got lots of courses there. We got lots more courses coming. So if you don't have anybody looking for training, please send them over. And with that, I just want to thank you for watching, for subscribing, and for just uh, supporting my work here. And uh, until next time, my friends, peace.